And it's been like this, uh, really the last couple of months, it's been growing and growing and growing. And the reason that it's happening is because of all of you. That's really what's going on, is that people are getting excited about the fact that there's a new possibility that we don't have to be stuck with uh, just Coke and Pepsi forever. That we can actually have a movement of, of a new type of politics, a politics that actually is listening and being attentive to what's actually really happening. That it doesn't have their hand in the pocket of big money. Hey, 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 hey. And actually represents the very people that are voting for those for that government. So, so this is this is great to be here today. Great to have Andrew. Good to have you here today. This is really a big shot in the arm for us too. With this last big push. I've been here four times. You have now. been. I've been a I'm really excited to be here. I, I, I'm blown away by the number of people coming up and the honking that's been going on as we've been here. Uh, it's really exciting to have two exceptional candidates like Dan Hines and uh, Donovan Cavers running in Kamloops. You know, we know in British Columbia, we know in British Columbia that Kamloops is the bellwether for the province. And if you do well in Kamloops, you do well in the province. In fact, nobody wins an election without winning in Kamloops. And we know we have two outstanding candidates here who can take this, both the Kamloops North and Kamloops South Thompson. Dan and Donovan, thank you so much for running. Hey. You know, their story is very similar to my story. Dan, a, a facilitator, uh, I don't know, a, part, a wildlife manager, I believe, at some point, uh, a, a priest. Donovan, a longtime city councillor, both serving the communities, and both never really thought that politics in a BC Green government would be something that would actually be a career path. They stepped aside to move and put their names forward because they recognize what's going on in this province needs to change. On the one hand, we have the BC Liberals. The BC Liberals who are taking millions of dollars from their corporate donors and then making decisions that affect those very same donors. And then on the other hand, we have the BC NDP taking millions of dollars from big labor unions and then making decisions that affect those big labor unions. Labor unions, corporations, they don't vote. People vote. And who is there for the people of British Columbia? It's the BC Greens, the only party that has said no to corporate union donations and yes to donations from the people of British Columbia, because when we make decisions, yeah. it's for you, yeah. the people. Yeah. 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 Sure, that's okay. Yeah. We'll just uh, mic up uh, mic number two. <laughs> yeah. pa pausing, so. Yeah. Sorry, everybody. That's okay. People with the signs want to kind of get over here. Oh. You know, Adam, Adam's... The camera's okay. pointing this way. Yeah, yeah, we get to get the signs in here, actually. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah just don't, yeah, don't go on the road too much. It would be bad if yeah, somebody got run over by you a know, bus today. That would be yeah. across, across British Columbia, we're seeing people saying the same thing. They have a growing anxiety as to what's going to lay ahead. Even the driver, the cab driver, who took me here today from the airport as we're about to board the bus, told me the same thing I've heard in Victoria. I've heard in Nelson. I've heard up and down the island in Vancouver, all across British Columbia. His story was the big issue. The big issue for me and my family and people in Kamloops is there's no family doctors. There's just no family doctors. But the BC Greens, we have an idea. We have solutions. We've offered those solutions. We recognize, as in the case of, of this particular cab driver, whose doctor decided to go and work in the hospital, to work off as a doctor in the hospital, not an administrator. We recognize that there's a whole generation of doctors out there who want to be doctors, not administrators. And our system is burdensome, such that the average family doctor is spending a day and a half in paperwork, rather than us giving them opportunities to actually be salaried. And we'll see that if you look at our platform, an innovative approach in a bottom-up manner to actually reinvigorate our healthcare system. And that is just one issue. You know, there's growing disparity between those who have and those who haven't. The BC Liberals say, stay the course. Stay the course because it's working. We have a booming economy. That economy that we have 
is booming in some parts despite the BC Liberals, not because of them. Yeah. And our economy, our economy is not booming because of BC Liberal approach to resource development. It's booming because of an out of control speculative housing market and construction market in Metro Vancouver. And that is not healthy. I'm sure you're starting to see this affordability issue hit Kamloops like it's hit in Victoria too. We have a different approach again as BC Greens. We recognize that for resource to be developed in the means and ways, we need to rethink the way we do that. We need to move in a bottom-up fashion. We need to engage First Nations at the onset, not come in after the fact, after corporation has met with government, and then try to market it to the people and local First Nations, because that divides community instead of building communities. Our approach, our approach, our approach here in Kamloops it's the same as elsewhere. It's, we're so supportive of resource development when it's done right, when you bring people with you, because they will bring you your strongest advocates if you can bring them with you. And I'll tell a little story if I might. A little story of two examples. One example is Jumbo Glacier, where developers went to government. <coughs> they decided this was a good idea. So they marketed it to the community, and now it's still in the Supreme Court of Canada as a Tanaka Nation. So well, this is our sacred ground. We don't want you there. If they're here, we don't want this there. And so it's fight, fight, fight. On the other hand, let's go to Vailmont, where the people of Vailmont, the First Nation nearby, came together and said, we want a ski resort. We want a ski resort, and we want to work with you, the developer. And the barrier for innovation and development there was not the people, not the developer. It was government putting in, tape, in place red tape to ensure that it happened fast. There's a successful project. You go in at the bottom, you build consensus, and the community are then your best advocates for, for the resources that you want to develop. We're really excited about what we, the BC Greens have to, have to offer this province. You know, the BC NDP are campaigning on being better than the BC Liberals. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> We're going to be better than really bad, which is just plain bad. Whereas the BC Greens believe we should be best, not bad, not really bad, but best. And that's why our platform emerged from best practices in use around the world, because we know they work. We know they put people first, and they know they lead to a prosperous society that's not only a prosperous economy, but also a prosperous education system, social system, as well as a prosperous environment for all to benefit. say you a vote for the Greens is a vote for the Liberals. I mean, imagine the arrogance to, suspect, to suggest that the people of Kamloops and the neighboring communities do not actually own their vote and make decisions as to who they vote for. A vote for the Greens is a vote for the Greens. It's a vote for a change you can actually count on, not a cynical vote for the opposition. excited as to what's going on. You know, the leaders debate was, was a bit of a turning point, I think, for at least what I've seen, is that people got an opportunity to see BC Greens and other parties. They got an opportunity to see a Premier so stuck in the message box that for every answer, whether it be about education, whether it be about health care, whether it be about affordability, the answer was three words, jobs jobs, jobs. That's not answering. That's just message boxing. And with the BC NDP, I think what was remarkable, it was summed up by one question. Mr. Horgan, so your MSP plan is really a plan to develop a plan to come up with a plan. And his response, correct. You can't make this stuff up. This is what's going on in BC politics. And when Mr. Horgan said in that debate, when Mr. Horgan said in that debate, the BC Liberals are going to win this election, at which point I stopped and said, did you just say that? I just wish that I'd had a couple of more seconds to go on. Because if Mr. Horgan has given up and allowing the BC Liberals to win, we're not giving up. We're growing, we're thriving, we're growing. Look at these candidates here. The BC Liberals don't need to win this election because the BC Greens can and will and are working hard to win this group election so that the people of British Columbia are front and center, not corporate or union donors. Our platform 
in the emerging economy is also second to none. It's a, it's a platform that recognizes that the strength of our resource sector is not only in the resource, but in its ability to attract the tech sector to the resource sector. So that places like Kamloops, places like Kelowna, Terrace, can actually bring tech and resource together if they have access to broadband. We commit to ensure that we think about broadband like we think about roads. Whereas roads get people from A to B, broadband gets information from A to B. And just as we demand from our government leaders access to roads to go from A to B, we also should be demanding access to broadband and its redundancy to ensure information gets from A to B. And the BC Greens will do just that. You know, to conclude, I'd just like to say this. People will say you can't do it. People will say you can't win this election. And that is a challenge that we love as BC Greens because we know, we know what people are thinking. We know that we are in it to win it. And we know that we can. What we need, of course, is for each of you to continue to work hard. Thank you for what you've done so far. To get five friends, to get five friends, to get five friends. To actually know, know and learn about what Dan and Donovan stand for. Honest people who are putting, stepping aside to represent the people. Not the union and corporate donations. Not corporate side interests. Not career politicians like some. You know, our party that has a diverse array of people. Two ministers, one Anglican, one United. We've got a number of scientists. We've got a pediatric cancer researcher. We've got lawyers. We've got laborers. We've got forest workers. We've got civil servants. We've got a diverse array of expertise. And you are going to win it here in Calvin. So thank you for coming up today. Ten, fifteen minutes or so. Uh, so what we're going to do is, I think it'd be really cool, is if we could line up all the way down the, the edge of the street for one shot down the down the block to the bus. Let's do that, and then you can go on to the bus. Uh, the campaign office is also open. You can kind of drift around, and then uh, Andrew's going to be heading to the corner pretty quick here to get a chance to say hi to Andrew too. But let's let's do the line.